channel and this will be my first YouTube video so bear with me but today we will be kind of talking about the program that I went through in the nursing school that I attended along with kind of how the curriculum is set up, lunch breaks, study tips, college life, everything basically. I'm trying to not make this video too long but I'm just trying to give y'all as much information as I can so just bear with me um so for one you will see me looking at my iPad it has kind of like the questions and a layout of how I'm going to do the video and yeah we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it so I did the associate's degree in nursing program through Alcorn State University also, people may not know what the ASN degree is in the first place because they're only used to hearing about the LPN and the BSN program and everything above. So, I'm not going to get too deep into that in this video. I'm going to try and make another video regarding the differences between the different degrees and that type of stuff. But the main thing you need to know is... I will be taking the NCLEX RN just as a bachelor's nurse um, will be doing. I will not be taking the NCLEX PN. So that's the biggest thing that you need to know. So yeah, the requirements for the ASN program through Alcorn, you have to be first admitted through Alcorn State University if you are not already. Um, you have to have a high school transcript or documentation of your GED sent to them and on file. You also have to have a at the lowest an 18 on ACT. And you have to have at least an 18 on the math and the reading portion. So just because the least amount, like the lowest ACT score that you need is an 18, the higher you get, the better chance of getting in the program you have. And I'll explain it a little bit after I talk about all of the requirements. So next you have to have a 2.5 GPA at the lowest. But again, the higher you get, the better chance you have. And then you have to have your prereqs completed. I saw that you can apply for the ASN program at your earliest, your freshman year, second semester. So your spring semester and for all corn usually it's at the beginning of the semester so you definitely don't want to miss it i don't have a specific date right now at this time but if you ask me or like message me like on social media or something then like i can probably figure it out for you but so what i mean is for the bsn program they have a lot more prereqs that have to be done for the program for you to start and you have to spend more time doing the prereqs in order for you to apply and get in the BSN program. So that's mainly why you start at a later date for the BSN program versus the ASN program. So again, there's nothing wrong with either one. Like you, you pick your poison and you do whichever program you feel like you want to do. A lot of people choose the BSN program because that's kind of like all they know and that's just what they want to do. They don't want to have to go back to school for their already BSN program for feet for me um I wanted to get out of school sooner and start working as a nurse faster so I feel like the best route is the ASN route through Alcorn depending on now I will say that it depends on when you decide to apply to the program I did it at the beginning of my freshman year but if you decide to go through college get your degree in something else and then start the nursing program it won't really be a difference. Like, you've been in school for four years, you might as well pick whichever one you feel like is best. So you also have to have, so some people get confused about this. You have to all apply through Alcorn, like just to be an Alcorn State University student. And then you have to apply to the actual nursing school. And that's two different um, applications. Now you don't have to pay for, I don't think you have to pay for either. Don't quote me on that, but I don't think you have to. But um, you will have to send in multiple documents. So just because you sent in, um, excuse me, your high school transcript and your ACT score and stuff to them, 
that does not mean that it's just going to transfer over to them. You have to also send it to the nursing school. So don't be confused when you send in your application and you think that, oh, okay, I don't need to send in my ACT score, my high school transcript, all of that, whatever they ask you for, because you sent it to main campus. They literally are two different schools. Like, yes, they're a part of the same branch or whatnot, but just because they're a part of the same main university does not mean their paperwork for each school basically goes back and forth. So I applied my freshman year, so 2017 um, spring semester, which was the second semester. Okay, so for one, each nursing class in the ASN program for each semester is one nursing class, but it's eight credits. So that's different than the BSN program because they may have five classes in each of them or three credits, kind of like a regular main campus class. But for ASN, it's eight credits for one class. And I believe that's because that one nursing class is half clinicals and half lecture. So during that one class from Tuesday through Friday, and yes, I say Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday because Mondays you have a break. You don't have class on Mondays unless they specifically tell you that you have like a meeting to go to or um, you have to meet in the auditorium for something or y'all have like a review or something. But usually y'all don't have classes on Monday. Um, so Tuesday and Wednesday are usually the long days. I want to say starting at the beginning of nursing school, they were 8 to 4 nine to four eight to three something like that don't quote me on it because it could change this is just how it was when um i went through my first semester of my first year um so yeah and then clinicals includes the class portion or the nursing school um dummy part and the actual hospital part and when I say the dummies, I can't think of the name right now for the little mannequin things, but in the nursing school, they have a room with different mannequins that you practice on. I mean, obviously, you have a blood, you have medication, I, um, IVs, NG2s, room changes. So basically, everything that you learn in nursing school, you can do on the dummies. And you usually do it on those first because you have to do checkoffs. Now, the way that the checkoffs are set up are they give you a skill. They show you the skill um, or they like show you videos and stuff. And then at the beginning of nursing school, they will put in time in the the lab or with the dummies and whatnot um, set in your schedule. So set in the time that you're in class from eight to four, you may be in there for like two hours practicing NG tubes. And you may do that for a couple class periods until you have to check off, meaning you do it in front of a instructor and they tell you that you either pass meaning you know how to do it you were confident in it everything but you can also not pass and they tell you that you have to do remediation meaning you have to go back in the lab for a certain amount of hours to um to practice it so you can redo it now with checkoffs you get three times to take it or do it so if you pass if you don't pass the first time you get remediation then you're able to retake it and if you don't pass it again you may get more remediation and you may have to also do extra stuff to make sure that you pass it the third time and this is kind of similar to the dose count so after that third time if you don't pass then you don't pass the course so basically you kind of aren't in the program anymore um I passed all of mine, so I can't tell you what happens if you don't pass it the third time specifically and how uh, and how that will go if you don't, but with the checkoffs, basically just practice, practice at home. Do not, okay, do not do any invasive procedures on anybody in your classroom. Because for one, that you can cause infection. You don't really know what you're doing. You can mess up something. And then you call in the nursing instructor saying, um, Dr. B, 
um, me and so-and-so was doing IVs and her arm looks weird. What should I do? And she really can't do nothing because, yes, you get the little kits or whatnot with the supplies and whatnot, but you don't know if they're sterile. You don't really know if um, they're safe for you to use on actual people because they're practice kits. So you don't really know what them um, kits and stuff been through. So I would not suggest that you do it on different people. So, um, yes, again, you will have class Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Tuesday and Wednesday is the 8 to 4 or however many hours close around those hours. And then Thursday and Friday is usually 9 to 11 or if they move it back 10 to 12. But it's usually only two hours. And then Monday you could do whatever you want to do. If you want to spend that day for studying, all right. If you want to spend that day to go to main campus, go home, whatever, all right. Um, so I talked about clinical days. So yeah, you probably won't start actual clinicals in the hospital until the end of first semester. And it may not be that many days, but the second semester is when you'll actually start getting into the hospital more, but you'll still have checkoffs. Before you can start hospital clinicals, you will have to take a dose calculation test. And it's basically math, knowing how to convert um, decimals or use decimals, convert conversions to so like meals to liters or kilograms to grams. And as you go through the program, you'll have to know different more ways about those calc. We did get have to buy a those calc book. We didn't really use it that much. We did use it at the beginning, but um, you will need it because you have to use it in class. But if some people it don't probably it really don't help some people so if that's not what helps you then try to find something on youtube or online that can't help you because you have to pass it you get three times also to take that and each time you will get remediation so you'll get a lot of practice problems if you don't pass and then you'll retake it and if you don't pass again you'll get remediation you have to take it if you don't pass then you pass you don't pass the course so you're not in the program anymore. So with that, um, you have to have everything right. So if you put, if the answer is 0 0.2 milliliters, and that's what the teacher has on her scoring guide for the question, and you just put 0 0.2, or you put 0 0.2 milligrams instead of milliliters, that question is wrong, and now you got to retake the test. Because you have to get 100% for the hospital that we go to. Some programs allow you to only a 90% or 98% or something like that. But our program, you have to get all the questions right or you're wrong. Um, I feel like that's a good thing and a bad thing. But, I mean, you do have to be safe and know what you're doing before you go in the hospital. So just practice. It's really not that hard. Um, and if you don't get it, just ask. Like, you have to learn how to ask questions in nursing school and find other things to help you because they may not always be able to help you the way that you need it. So, if they don't help you in the beginning, find something else.